Hello everyone. This video covers uh, section 6.4 and 6.5. 6.4 is about determinants and 6.5 is matrix um, factorization. So let's start with section uh, 6.4. Now, determinants, just like Gaussian elimination, is something that you should have seen before even in basic uh, college algebra. But if you have taken linear algebra, this is a topic where people go into a lot of detail. So if you already took linear algebra, this section should be a piece of cake. And if you haven't taken linear algebra, then this section will be easy. All right, let me start with a very basic example of what a determinant is, just to refresh your memory. Let's say that you have the matrix C is equals to 2, 3, 1, 4, which is clearly a 2 by 2 matrix. So the determinant, which is uh, denoted DET, or the matrix C, is equal to this times that minus this times that. So in this case, it will be 2 times 4 minus 1 times 3, which is a minus 3, which is equals to 5. And that's it. That's how I find the determinant of a 2 by 2. In general, if you have a matrix A, and then this is A, B, C, D, then remember the determinant of A is equals to A, D minus C, C, B. What about if the matrix is bigger than just 2 by 2? For example, let's say that you have a 3 by 3. This is, let's say this is 2, negative 1, 3, 1, 4, 3, 3, 2, 1. There is technically two different methods to do this. So we're going to go with the method that uses the, the minors and cofactors. So if we want to find the, the determinant here of A, so the determinant A, technically here you have one, two, three, four, five, six different choices. To make life easier, you just pick the first, the first row. And then you're going to alternate the signs, starting with positive on the uh, right top corner, the left top corner. And then you change the signs. So technically this is plus, minus, and so forth. But you only want to use the first one. Then you don't even have to worry about putting the the plus or minuses on the rest of the matrix. And again, this is probably something you have done before. So the first number in here is 2. This number is positive. This is positive. So positive times positive is positive. So this will be positive 2. Now, since this row is technically covered, then the 2 is in this column, so we cover this. The only thing that you have left, it will be this, this bar. So therefore, the, this will be times the determinant of this one, which notice this is 2 by 2. So it will be just like this example. Then uh, here, negative and negative is positive, so this will be plus 1. We do the same trick, you cover this one, this is always cover. So you have one, three, three, one left. This is one, three, three, one. And then uh, the last one is gonna be three. Again, same trick, you cover this. This is already covered, so this is what you have left. It should be one, four, three, two. When you simplify everything, and you should check this by yourself, this is supposed to be negative 42. By the way, this, this, and this are called uh, minors, and you'll see why is that important in a little bit. So therefore, in general, so in general, if A is a uh, 
n by n matrix, okay? Then the determinant of A is equals to the sum from J equals to one to N or AIJ, AIJ, which is technically just the sum from J equals to one to N, negative one to the I plus J. Notice that this minus one is how this will change the sign. So this is the plus, minus, plus, and so forth. And then times M I J, this is true for I equals to one, two, the way to N. And this is what is called the the minus, which is this one right here. Now let's take a look at theorem seven, I mean six point one six, which gives you all the properties of the determinants. So properties of determinants. Memorizing these properties is gonna make your life a lot easier, not just in this class, but in other, other math classes. So here's the first, uh, first property. It says the following. Uh, if any row, so if any row or column of a matrix A has only uh, zero entries, which means you have a whole row or a whole column with just zeros, then the determinant of A is equals to zero. Number two, if A, so if the matrix A has two rows, has two rows or columns okay, of that are the same that are the same then the determinant of A is also equals to zero. Number three if let's say A tilde is obtained from A by uh, elementary uh, row operations. So elementary row operations. Remember the elementary row operations was like EI minus lambda EJ and then put in EI and so forth. So then if this is the case, that means the, the determinant of A tilde is equal to the determinant of A. Now, this one is very important because it means that if you do row operations, it will not change the, the determinant of the original matrix, which is actually even the case with Gaussian elimination. When you do the Gaussian elimination and you end up with a... Um, triangular matrix. Remember when you do Gaussian elimination, you start with A, and after you do Gaussian elimination, you end up with A tilde to, depending how many steps you did. So the determinant of this one and the determinant of this A, without the augmentation, should be the exact same determinant. Right now, uh, proper number four, so now let's say if A tilde, again, which is a different A tilde from the previous one, is obtained by multiplying one of the rows, only one of the rows. So remember this is what this means. You multiply row i by some constant and then you change row i. So if this is the case, which again, this means just multiply one uh, row by the constant lambda, then the determinant of a uh, tilde is equals to 
a times the determinant of a. So here it should be if a is obtained by a in matrix A. All right, we're skipping number uh, number five. Let's go to number six. This one is very important too. It says that the determinant of A times B is equals to the determinant of A times the determinant of B. Uh, this is used in many proofs. Number seven says that the determinant of A transpose is equals to the determinant of A. Remember that A transpose, okay, so this is transpose, or A transpose, is the determinant where you switch the rows for the columns. So you do that, it doesn't matter, the determinant of A and the determinant of the transpose is exactly the same. Number A, if A inverse exists, which remember, it doesn't exist all the time, uh, then uh, the determinant of A inverse is equal to 1 over the determinant of A. Uh, in case you forgot this or you don't remember, if A inverse exists, this implies that the determinant of A is not equal to 0. Or in other words, if the determinant of A is not equal to zero, that means the inverse exists. So this and this are equivalent. And then finally, number nine is the following. If A is uh, upper or lower uh, or diagonal uh, matrix, then the determinant of A is just equal to the product of the diagonal elements. And that's it. So for example, let's say you have the following upper triangular matrix. It's like A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, and this is zero, 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 and then this is this is one. So clearly, this is an upper triangular matrix, and therefore the the determinant of A is going to be a product of the diagonal elements, which will be one times four times one, which in this case is just equal to four. This is not equal to zero, so that means the inverse of this matrix exists. A example of a diagonal matrix could be something like this, like two zero 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 two zero 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 two. So therefore, the determinant in this case it will be two times two times two, which will give you eight. All right, so let's prove uh, at least one of these. So let's give it the proof of part A. Recall from uh, your previous lives. The A transpose times A is equal to the identity matrix, which is the same thing as, as this. So you can use either one. So then the determinant of A inverse times A is the same thing as the determinant of I. Remember that I is technically a diagonal matrix. Okay, so therefore the determinant of the identity matrix is just equals to 1. So it will be 1 times 1 times 1. It actually doesn't matter how many you have, this will always be 1. So this equals to 1. Now by rule number 6, or properly 6, this is the same thing as the determinant of A inverse times the determinant of A. So therefore this means that the determinant of A inverse is equals to 1 over the determinant of the following example is one of the best to check that you understand how these properties works. So here it is. Let's say you have the following matrix A. So this is very general. This is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Okay. And let's say that this is given that the determinant of A 
equals to minus 6. Okay? Now, let's say that we have a new matrix which is created from A. And the matrix is this. This is 2D uh, minus 2E minus 2F. This is minus A minus B minus C. The question is, what is the determinant of P? The first thing you should notice, so there's no need to write steps, but it just looks cooler with steps, so let's look to step one. So notice that the first thing we do is, technically you switch this row with this one. Okay, so these two are switched. And by property number one, you switch two rows, then, um, uh, sorry, for property number, number three, if you switch any two rows, it's the same thing as uh, multiplying by minus 1. So therefore, in step 3, uh, this is what we have so far. We have minus 6. But then since you are switching row 1 and row 3, you have to multiply by minus 1. Then for step 2, notice how the second row is multiplied by minus 2, which by property 3, I believe, uh, it says that you need to multiply this by negative, negative 2. And then finally, you can see that the last row is multiplied by negative, negative 1. So for the step 3, you have minus 6 times negative 1 times negative 2. Up to this is step 2. And now you have to multiply by negative 1. And when you simplify everything, this is just equals to, to 12. Now, as you may be aware from uh, your previous experiences in college algebra, it takes a long time, a long time to find the, the inverse of a function doing Gaussian elimination or road reduction, because you technically have to do the, the work of Gaussian elimination, which remember it took NQ uh, operations to do. You had to do that twice, so the, the process is very, very expensive. So in practice, you rarely actually find the, the inverse. But here, there is a, it's a pretty interesting way to find the inverse of a, of a matrix using uh, determinants. So this is how we're going to do this. First, let's uh, pretend that we're going to find the, the determinant, which we know how to do by now. Remember, you select one row, and then just uh, start with plus in here and change the, change the signs. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do here is this. If we're going to find the, if you were going to find the determinant, well, the determinant of A, Remember, it's equals to 2 times, um, you're going to cover this. So this will be um, 5 minus 1, 1 and 3. And then the minus and minus is going to be plus 1, this is 0, minus 1, 1, 3. And then plus 1 times 0, 5. One one. You should check that the the answer to the whole thing is actually twenty eight. So it's very easy. Just check the steps. Remember that this were called the the minors. So we're gonna use this information too. So for example, here the matrix of this part only is equals to sixteen the um, determinant of this one is uh, 0 times 3 is 0 minus minus so this is positive 1 and this is negative negative 5 okay so we're gonna, we're gonna need this information to find a new matrix which for now is gonna call it MC and notice that uh, the 2 is this value right here, and that gives you the minor that was 16. So therefore, this value will be 16. 
then this value is a uh, is one. So the number one will go here, and then the next value, the negative five, it will go here, and so forth. So these three values are related to this, and then you have to do this technically nine times. So you should check this value, this should be 4, 5, negative 3, negative 4, 2, and 10. So then the, um, the inverse, so this is a new method that you may have or may not, may not have seen before. It's going to be 1 over the determinant of A times MCT, and this part is called the adjoint of the matrix A. So in our particular case, this will be one over 28. MC was uh, the matrix we have here. So the transpose, remember you change the rows with the columns. So this will be 16, one, negative five. And then this will be a uh, four, five, minus three, then negative four, two, and ten. And this is the inverse of the, the function, which is actually a pretty interesting way to to uh, what to go about this. All right, so that's it for determinants. We're going to go now to six point five, which is uh, matrix factorization. All right, so in this section, which is section 6.5, we're gonna cover cover a matrix factorization. And there are there are actually many ways to factorize a matrix. We're only gonna focus here on one specific method. Okay? So the idea is pretty, it's pretty simple. You will have a, a matrix A which has to be a square matrix, and you are going to factorize it into the product of two matrices, L and U, where L is going to be a lower triangular matrix. So this will be L11, L12, and so forth. This is a L21, L31, L22, L31, and this keeps going until NN. And here, they should be, should be zero. So everything in here will be a zero. So this is a lower triangular, which means everything on the top of the diagonal is equal to zero. And then U will be upper triangular, which means you will have U11, U12, all the way to U1N. And then this will be zeros. This will be u two two, u two n, and then finally u and n. Now the reason why uh, we're trying to do this is like you saw already. Gaussian elimination kind of takes a a while to solve, even though it's a very efficient method under the right circumstances. So technically, what you want to solve is this. So this is what you want to solve and we already did Gaussian elimination where remember B is a vector and A is a matrix that is N by N. Now therefore here uh, if this is the case since you can factor A as the product of L and U so this is the same thing as trying to solve L U X equals to B. Okay? All you're all you're doing is replacing A by L U. We're gonna call this uh Y and notice the Y is also a vector. If you check there is a vector, not a matrix. So to solve this we're gonna technically require two steps. The first one it's going to be the you're gonna to have to solve L Y equals to B. Okay, so 
from here we're gonna solve for y and the amount of steps that it takes is of order of n square <clears throat> and then step two you're gonna solve u x equals to y okay so solve for x which is this is what we this is what we want remember that x is equals to x1 x2 and so forth all the way to xn and this one also requires only n square operations now there are multiple ways to uh, to figure out l and u and the reason why we need to do this or why you want to do this is because you technically can recycle the l and u so you don't have to do the row elimination over and over so that's the main purpose of finding l and u and i like i just say there are multiple ways to do this so we're gonna focus on a very specific method which is called do littles method okay and do little's method is uh makes the process pretty easy uh what this one does is you're gonna set the diagonals equals to to one so that's gonna be the by default so that will make solving uh the variables which in that case will be only this this and this much easier because this will be set equals to one all right so let's try this with a uh, an example so let's say that the matrix we have is the following let's say that a is equals to uh, 3 negative 1 2 6 negative 1 1 negative 3 5 and 2 so that's matrix a now we're going to do a uh, gaussian elimination or row operations exactly what we did in um, section 6.1 so just to refresh memory this is what we did there so you say here uh, equation 2 minus 2 equation 1 whatever you get put it in equation 2 this will give you a 0 1 negative 3 then for the next one you will say equation one plus equation three whatever you get put it in equation three so this will give you zero four four all right so then we do this we do this one more time then the next um operation should be uh, here we already have 3, this 1, 2, this is 0, 1, negative 3. And then this will be E3 minus 4, E2. And put it in E3, so this will give you 0, 0, 16. And you should check all of these values. Now, by performing a Gaussian elimination or raw reduction, you automatically get the matrix u so therefore this is u already this three is technically u one one this one is u one two and so forth this one is u three three remember that the whole point of this is that you're gonna find two matrices l and u we already found u that when you multiply both of them you're supposed to get uh, the original matrix a now L is going to be equals to one zero zero one zero. It will be L two one L two two uh ah, sorry L three one and then L three two is equals to one and then U is the matrix we just found right now. This is three minus one two zero one negative three zero zero sixteen and this has to equals to to a which the original matrix was this six uh, minus one one 
this is minus one. This one has to be two. And then this is minus three, phi, and two. Again, this is the matrix we just found in the last, the last page. Now, you remember the matrix multiplication. Well, uh, when we multiply, obviously this times this, it should give you three, which is, which is fine. So therefore, if you wanna figure out this one, we're gonna multiply this row times this column, and this should equals to uh, this value six right here. Why? Because this is a row two, column one, which is row two, uh, column one, which is right here. Okay. So if we do that, and you're gonna have to do that for this one, for this one, and for that one, we will get the following equations. This will give us L two one times three plus one times zero plus zero this has to equal to six from here it follows that l to one is equals to two so this is not hard it just takes a little bit of time you just have to be careful to not make a mistake because then you have to repeat the whole thing so now if we do uh this times this you should use the first row first so that you can take advantage of the zeros right here then you will end up with l three one times three plus L three two times zero plus zero, this should equal to negative three, which is the value right here. So if we do this row times this column to give you this value right here. And then from here, we'll end up the L three one should equals to negative one. Okay. And then finally to find uh L three two since we already know L three one now you can do this row with this this column. So you'll end up with the following you'll have L three one times minus one plus L three two times one plus zero and this should be equals to to five. Why? Well, uh, we're multiplying uh, row number three times column two. So therefore here, we'll end up with a uh, row two, I'm sorry, row three, column two, which is the number, the number five. So that's how we get this five is equals to this one right here. Then if you do a little bit of algebra uh, and you solve for L32, you can check the L32 is just equals to, to four. So therefore the lower triangular matrix is going to be one, zero, zero. It's gonna be two, one, zero, negative one, four, one. Remember that for this method, all of this has to be equal to, to 1. Finally, let's see how we will use this to solve the actual problem. Again, let's say that you have a system 3x1 minus x2 plus 2x3. And this was equal to 7. And then you have 6x1 minus x2 plus x3. And this is equal to seven this is minus three x one plus five x two plus two x three and this is equals to thirteen this is the exact same a matrix that we have so far so then the only thing new here is that b is equals to seven seven thirteen and a is still the the exact same matrix we start with three minus one two 6 minus 1, 1, minus 3, 5, and 2. So according to the method for the step 1, we need to solve first Ly equals to B. 
which in our case would imply solving 1, 0, 0, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, 4, 1. We're going to multiply these times y1, y2, y3. And you want to solve this equals to 7, 7, 13. And you will see the reason why we do this is to solve the systems. It's pretty easy because if you multiply this times that, you only have y1 left, which means y1 will be 7. Okay, so y1 is equal to 7. If y1 is equal to 7, then the next equation will be 2 times y1, which is 14, plus y2 plus 0 equals to, to 7, which in this case, it will give us that y2 is equal to negative 7, and then y3, you can check, is equal to 48. So to solve this system is very, very easy. Let's just go like this. Okay. Then finally, for step two, we're gonna solve ux equals to y. Remember that this is what we really want. Not the y, but the, the x. And u, well, we found it to be three minus one, two, zero, one minus three, zero, zero, sixteen. And now uh, we're solving x1, x2, x3. So we're gonna do the same back substitution or backward substitution that we did with gas and elimination. And you should check this. Remember this is 16x3 equals to 48. So the first equation is 16x3 equals to 48, which means that x3 equals to three. If you follow the backward substitution that we did in 6.1, you should check that x2 is equal to 2, and then x1 is equal to 1. So this method is pretty easy. It can be very time-consuming, but the process is pretty, it's pretty simple. So what is the advantage of using this method over Gaussian elimination? The advantage is this. If you look to the, to the system here, if you change the value for B, you have to do Gaussian elimination again. You have to do the whole process again. If you change this again, you have to do Gaussian elimination again. The advantage of creating L in U is that you can recycle the L in U. The only thing that's going to be new is the vector B. And as you saw, to solve this system is very easy and very fast. To solve this one is also pretty easy and pretty fast. So that's the advantage of having a factorization.